with a different shade of blue, there's a th I feel like there's a theme there um, compared to laugh tracks. Um, I could be wrong, but I feel like it's more like meant to be in the order that it's in. Like it kind of tells a story in a way. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So we we do spend a lot of time uh, like on the order of the record. Right. Uh, if, that, if that's your question. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, I don't think necessarily telling a story per se, uh, you know, it's, that might be left to interpretation a little bit. But yeah, it's really, it's a lot of Brian uh, kind of, you, you do want to create a vibe yeah. with the record. You know, there, there's 12 songs. You kind of want to start in a certain place be in, in the middle in a certain place and end in a certain place absolutely uh yeah a lot of time is spent on that and uh even we did that you know laugh tracks was the first record like full-length record we did and we did it then and it, you know of course first time for everything might not have come across like that but you know that's cool that you picked up on that for a different shade of blue because that is definitely something we we spend time on and even even between the songs if there's like a sound clip or something yeah. that's all like all of that's got thought put into it and stuff yeah uh, does the album have any sort of like significant meaning to you i mean obviously you're not, you're not the one like screaming it but yeah yeah you know. I, it definitely does uh because so much happened after laugh tracks yeah that we like as far as you know we were touring non-stop the band was growing we were doing a lot of crazy stuff going to all these different places that when a different shade of blue was about to come out i mean we're all sitting there i'm sitting there thinking like you know what if it flops like what yeah. if it doesn't go over well and the fact that it did as well as it did and you know it only came out what last year yeah. uh, may, a year and a half ago uh so we kind of lost this year but I feel like you know, if we had this year to tour, it would have we would have just been climbing that ladder, climbing those stairs, and that's what it means to me. It's like yeah, the hard work we did put into it. You know, we we spent uh, almost twice as long in the studio doing it. Uh, we put a lot of effort into it, a lot of thought into it, and the fact that it satisfied the, the goals that we might have had for it was really something special. I remember because when I moved to school the first time uh, for freshman year, that was the summer going into the release of the album. Yeah. And I remember the hype within right on. the community was just building and building and building. It was almost like you guys had the world at your fingertips almost. Like that's what it, that's what it looked like to me, you know. There was there's some days that it, it I don't want to sound cocky and say it kind of felt that way, but it definitely was exciting yeah. to 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 know like people people wanted to know what we did and then eventually cared about what we did so much and yeah, uh, it's it's very cool to know that things you're putting a lot of time and effort into are in some way paying off like yeah. that, you know? What was that release weekend like for you? Because I know that it was like a lot of... Because I remember you guys played in Grimey's, like you guys played like some smaller shows around yeah, the yeah. area. But you guys, I believe you finished the tour in Olden County. We... Are starting... I it? actually... We... I think it was... The, uh, so the record came out... Uh, we, we played a home show, and then... I think that's the schedule. Uh, and then I think the next day we went to Nashville and did Grimey's in the end and stuff like that. And then came home, I'm pretty sure. Or did we do one more? Honestly, I would have to go back and look. Yeah. But uh, but that was super cool. And that was like the brainchild of Brian and Isaac to say, let's do like, you know, a week's worth of shows in super small rooms kind of around the area. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that was a... We, we, you know to us like in the group chat we called it like the listening party tour because it's like hey record's not out but we're going around playing yeah. it yeah and uh i thought that was a really cool way to do it it was exciting to play the new songs in such a small intimate space yeah and uh have it be received early i suppose 
and yeah. uh, and then have the record come out while we're at home. It was an amazing time. Yeah, right. Super I, cool. I could imagine so because I know you guys have a good backing especially with how much you represent Holden County anyway. So yeah, yeah, that must have been a very like eye-opening, but in a good way. Like definitely like you're just like, this is insane. Like I never thought I'd be doing something like this. You know, we, uh, so the, the, the home show we did, uh, I think the, the venue cap was like eight fifty, And I think we ended up like, you know, kind of like waving in, another like 150 people at the end of the day there's like a thousand people in this venue and we're like this is not right yeah but we'll do it anyway <laughs> yeah right right for sure it's all about the memories man because you never know absolutely when something is going to happen where it's not going to be around as much you know well, this year's the prime example yeah but, i mean I, I hope it gets back to going i'm hoping more. so too man i really i no one really knows when or how but uh I, it'll be back just i'm just ready for it yeah, waiting right. on it. um are there any songs that you really enjoy playing off of the album live in particular like yeah dude i really like playing denied by fate yeah it's it's kind of like a fast kind of all over the place you know not not necessarily technical but i feel like i'm like here i'm over there i'm I'm on the toms. I'm, you know, kind of all over the kit. Yeah, man. And uh, so that was a lot of fun, and and it's at a good pace. And that's usually it's a fun one to go into, and I love the breakdown at the end. Yes. So I enjoy that one a lot. Yes, I uh, I have a big playlist for when I'm driving back and forth to campus. And yeah. And whenever anything, like I always, like when that album came out, I was going back and forth to home a lot, anyways. So, like, I remember when it would come on, especially when it first came out, and I hadn't really had time to, like, sit and listen to it yet. Like, that was my time to listen to it. Dude, when I first heard that song, I was like, this is insane. Like, <laughs> Thank you, bro. Is, yeah, man, of course. Are there any songs off the album that are trickier to play than you remember? Oh. Uh, ooh. I, I wouldn't say trickier. Uh... The only the only thing I would I would say is tricky is some nights will like twist things up kind of on the fly you know with yeah. like oh th this is how we're gonna go into this one or or this one is gonna end this way so we can go into that song this way that kind of thing yeah sometimes that's tricky for me because my brain is just all over the place all the time I'm super ADD so uh, like we'll talk about it like once before the set and then when it happens i'm like oh yeah i was supposed to do this <laughs> but oh, yeah. let's see if i get it right you know it's kind of a shot in the dark yeah but uh none of the songs because we we spent a lot of time practicing before a tour okay and and even even now we we're getting together once a week just to you know make sure we're not too rusty yeah, but uh right, so right. i feel like go, going into it we're or at least i feel pretty prepared uh but yeah those little transitions man Sometimes if I'm not paying attention, they get me. Yeah, right. Of course. So coming from a listener's perspective, uh, some of these songs, when I first heard them, were like getting punched in the face in a good way, obviously. <laughs> Thank but, you. I was just like, like just like super mind blown, you know. Um, so are there were there any songs like when you guys were going back and listening? I'm assuming I've never been in a legitimate studio. Yeah, yeah. done something like that but when you guys were going back and listening to it or when maybe when you first heard like the finished product like were there any songs that you were just like holy shit, like this is crazy to listen back to uh yeah definitely on that record <laughs> i would say i would say most of them uh just because we we were in that studio man up in up in jersey for about a month and it was one of those things where like ideas were kind of flying all over the place and we're, we're able to like mess with it just to see like would this work no would this work yeah yeah uh, and they were i would say the one i remember the best would be uh we added a sound clip at the end of the song in the walls yeah and as soon as we like we we didn't even add the sound clip we just like had it going we're like all right press play like when this riff stops and let's see how it sounds so we didn't even add it yet, but we press play and we're listening to it and the riff is going underneath the sound clip and we're like, yeah, that's the song. Like, that's yeah. it. Yeah, right. That one stands out the most. But yeah, we were, because as soon as we're out of the studio, like, 
the 12 hour drive home we're just listening to it over and over yeah. and over yeah you know we're it, we're usually pretty juiced on on what we make when we're leaving well even now but when yeah, we're leaving right. we're like let's go let's go <laughs> i noticed you play with a toothpick in your mouth <laughs> <laughs> uh what's that like that, that kind of, like when i see it in videos i'm like <laughs> I do okay so I I love to chew toothpicks uh I get like super super minty toothpicks from Whole Foods yeah so like instead of chewing gum I just have like really minty toothpicks it's okay. like fresh breath uh and I don't know I would like go in and start playing a set I would still have the toothpick in my mouth and I'm like it's kind of like it's kind of like my my comfort, my security blanket now. Yeah, right. I'm like, like I'm, I'm like, I got the toothpick. I'm ready for the set. Because I'm just Let's like, go. That's hilarious though. It's funny because it's like, it doesn't really move much, you know. And it's like, I'm always like, dude, he's gonna swallow that. Like, it, like <laughs> dude, I get it all the time. Dude, that's, I don't know, man. So so props to you for being able to comfortably have a toothpick in your mouth while playing. That's hilarious. Like, Thank you. <laughs> complicated parts, you know. Like if you're sitting there just kind of like riffing or whatever you know oh it's yeah like, it's like oh look what i can do you know but you're out here just like shredding toothpick in your mouth <laughs> like like i said it, uh, it's, it's like my little comfort blanket so I'm, I'm sitting there chewing on it and if i chew through it i'll toss it and i'll grab another one but yeah right um yeah so brian made a post where he talked about when he threw himself into your drum set oh, yep what was that experience like for you that uh hurt <laughs> he he's joked for years like he's like one day i'm gonna do it one day i'm gonna do it and i'm like yeah. no you're not like no you're not no you won't like please don't and we played in st louis i think it was at Fubar, and uh it was it was so hot and sweaty it was pouring rain outside so it was humid yeah and so we're all just fucking gross and miserable uh someone like on stage was just spraying water into the crowd so it's like disgusting up there yeah so i'm sh i saw the fire in brian's eye man he he was like we're gross he's like there's no better time he's like i'm gonna do it and i said no <laughs> and then here he comes and i'm so glad those pictures came out the way they did yeah but i behind me was like maybe a f two feet of space before it was just like curtain and then wood yeah so so he came straight through landed on me and i just went straight back into this like wood oh and i'm splintery i mean i didn't get splinters but it yeah. definitely felt like i could have it's still wood, uh, you know it's still wood and i had a grown man jump on me uh, drums are everywhere yeah uh, luckily i think that was the last show so it's not like i had to worry about my heads or anything like that yeah right but that was pretty intense, and I love that it got captured. Speaking of intense, you posted a picture a while ago on Warp Tour. Your hand yeah. just completely annihilated. And yes. I was recently showing that to a friend. Um, I've never personally bled that much. I, I have before. Did you just happen to grab like a, a crack in the symbol or? So, oh, dude, I still have my finger has not like properly healed from it really? but what i did there was a crack big enough that i could like i was like oh i'll rip it off you know if if it resonates if the crack resonates it sounds broken but if you can get that off and it can yeah. resonate freely I've done, it sounds I've done a little it a few better times yeah so i tried to rip it off and the way i ripped it i totally just carved my finger on that uh, bronze or brass or whatever oh. symbols are made out of bronze I think yeah uh, right in there and it was like literally 45 seconds before we're supposed to start you know because warp tour is very on schedule you know yeah they're, they're literally like 45 seconds let's go and I'm like blood everywhere and I was like I don't know what to do I was like give me one extra minute so I think I like I just taped it I like had oh. gaff tape and I just taped my finger up and I started playing. And you know, it's, again, it's hot, sweaty, obviously blood's rushing to my hand and uh, the tape just gets bled off and blood is just going everywhere. It was Dude. disgusting, but I got a cool picture out of it too. That's what I'm saying, yeah. I mean, 
the hardcore band, you know? I mean, what else, what else could you be asking for?